There's a very good chance I'm starting to lose my mind. Not that anybody should give a shit about that, except maybe a handful of people with whom I am personally associated with, you know, like my son, my daughter, a few friends. But it it, it, it really is. It, it's it's just the stuff is making me crazy. And and especially when I read something that I found at Common Dreams about how many many of the voters in, in these key swing states around the country, like like what? Like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, um they're unfamiliar with Trump's statements about going to, he's going to be a dictator. And they 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 don't they don't know. I saw a film clip from MSNBC the other day where you know a, a reporter went to various Trump rallies and was asking people whether they wanted 4 years of a Trump dictatorship or 4 years of a continuation of Biden's presidency and every single one of them of course it was at a Trump rally every single one of them stated categorically some with big shitting shit eating grins on their faces displaying their total ignorance how so, yeah well of course I want I want a dictatorship I think sometimes you know the teacher needs to give us students a spanking so I think that's what we need right now so yes I want a dictatorship and I'm watching this shit and I'm thinking this is happening in in the United States of America these dumb fucks these people these are these are white people like me these are men and women like me these are people who, until they open their mouths, look like me, look like the people who listen to my podcast. But once they open their mouths, it becomes perfectly clear they are not like me. They are not like you. Somehow these people have become so irreversibly corrupted, so so totally devoid of any ability to take a look at what's happening and say, no, I don't want dictatorship. Yes, I do want to continue this experiment in democracy. This is what has me incredibly worried. I'm trying, honest to God, I'm trying to keep an attitude that I guess would be a positive attitude about the outcome of this year's election. I'm trying, and I'm not succeeding. I mean, every single day that I feel, well, you know, Trump is going to be defeated. He really is. This is not going to happen. Then something happens, like what happened in Ohio yesterday during the Republican primary. Three candidates, two of them you might consider traditional Republicans, although I disagree with that. But the third one was a Trump suck-up with whom Trump has appeared at political rallies, and that's the guy who won. And it's not even going to be a runoff. He won more than 50% of the vote out of a field of three, I believe. But I keep seeing this happening. I keep hearing people who honestly, except for the blank looks on their faces, do resemble me. They're white. They're men. Talking about how we need a dictatorship. And then I listen to the people who are trying, trying, trying to get the point across that this can't happen here. If it happens once, then the whole experiment in democracy is gone. I listen to Rachel Maddow. I listen to Jen Psaki. I I read Steve Schmidt. I listen to all these people, left and right, Republicans and Democrats. Yes, there are a few Republicans left. I listen to what they're saying, the warnings that they're giving us. We've got to stop this. We have to make. We have to make some kind of headway with the uh, with the millions of people who are going to put this country into a frame of dictatorship where it will stay until this country no longer exists. Trump. This ignorant son of a bitch has made a bunch of dictatorial statements since he launched his campaign for a second shot at the White House. 
But a new poll, according to Common Dreams, a new poll suggests that most voters are completely unaware of so many of the things that he said that would indicate he... He is going to be a Putin. He's going to be a Netanyahu. He's going to be an Erdogan. He's going to be a Bolsonaro. Name. I I don't care which dictator. This is what Trump wants to be. You know, his statements, he's going to be a dictator on day one, or immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country, or calling his political opponents vermin. Anyway, a poll obtained by... The New Republic was done by veteran Democratic pollster Jeff Guerin and a group called Save My Country. And the poll found that so many people don't, they don't even know that Trump has made these statements because they're not like you. They don't listen to this podcast or one of God knows how many podcasts that are still available for a while that are talking about we've got to stop this madness. They don't watch MSNBC. They sit like fucking zombies in front of their televisions and watch the Fox sewer or something even worse. Pump their heads full of bullshit and lies. Greg Sargent of the New Republic wrote this, quote, the poll asked them about 10 of Trump's most authoritarian statements. The statement that immigrants are poisoning the blood of the country, the, his vow to pardon rioters who attacked the Capitol, his promise to prosecute the Biden family with no cause, his threat to inflict mass persecution on the vermin, and more than that. And Greg Sargent writes, the result, only 31% of respondents said they previously had heard a lot about these statements by Trump. almost 70%. Huh? What? He said that? No, he didn't have said that. This poll was conducted in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, and the pollster spoke with 400 voters in each state. The pollster chose not to include anyone who voted for Trump in 2020, or people who said that Biden didn't legitimately win. That's not what the pollster was looking for. Those are likely voters who would never get behind Biden. Once respondents were made aware of Trump's statements, according to the pollster, they viewed him more negatively. And this shows that Democrats may have to educate voters on what Trump's been saying, about what he's going to do if Democrats want to win this November. Now, what I saw on this video clip online, MSNBC online, what I saw in the video clip was not that at all. Not viewing this orange filth more negatively after people were made aware of what he said. What I saw was just the opposite. Now, now granted, it's done selectively because... MSNBC, like you, like a lot of us, like me, who are trying, trying, trying to let people know what's at stake here. MSNBC is not going to show people who who say, yeah, I, I think Trump ought to be kicked to the curb. No, they're trying to warn us. Just like Steve Schmidt's piece at, at uh, Substack, the warning. And by the way, you might want to go check that out. Um The warning. Today, he uh, has a speech that Joseph Goebbels met in July of 1932. And it's lengthy. And it was, you know, it was written in 1932 and a lot of references to what happened to Germany as a result of the Treaty of Versailles. But if you read what Goebbels said and what he promised the German people in 1932 and then what actually happened the slaughter of six million Jews, the destruction of up to a hundred million people's lives when the world convulsed with fascism. It may, I'm not trying to be um, patronizing here, but it may get your attention. You know, the comparisons between Trump and the Nazis 
Well, at one time, they might have been considered gratuitous and, oh, what's the point? Jesus Christ, I I hope people understand now that the comparisons are absolutely right on target. This is what Trump is. This is what the filth around him are. These are American Nazis. So... The little clips that I see on MSNBC occasionally where people at these Nuremberg-style rallies are praising Trump and saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's a great man and the election was stolen from him and we need to have a dictatorship. We've got to have it. I hate to use that term, this one guy said, but that's what we need. Now, according to pollsters, after hearing what what statements, the, the ones that believe the pollster who, who said, this is what Trump has said. A lot of those people say, oh, he didn't say that. But for the people who believe that the pollster was telling them the truth, the percentage who see him as out for revenge jumped by five points. That means five points against Trump. The percentage who see him as dangerous rose by nine points, and the percentage who see him as a dictator climbed by seven points. That's according to what Greg Sargent wrote in this article that took apart the poll. That once people understand that Donald Trump is, is, is the biggest threat to this country that we have ever had, and the MAGA movement is... is we're right on the cusp of this goddamn move to fascist dictatorship sprinkled with, with, with these little elements of the sick, twisted Christianity. Once people hear that, they're less inclined, not, not 100% by any means, but they're less inclined to support the bastard. And Biden is still behind Trump in various national polls. And Biden wants to make sure that the election is about preserving democracy. While Trump, you know, I mean, preserving democracy, that's a very high-minded subject, right? Let's preserve democracy. All right, yes, indeed. How do we do that? Well, I don't know, but let's do it. Well, have more bowling leagues. That'll preserve democracy. That's a very difficult concept for people to get their minds around. It's certainly difficult for me to get my mind around. How about you? Preserve democracy. What the hell am I supposed to do? I'm Mike Malloy. I have a little old podcast. I spend so much of my time on the podcast asking people to keep the podcast going. What am I supposed to do to preserve democracy? What are you supposed to do? What the hell does that mean? That's what Biden is saying. Preserve democracy. You know what Trump is saying? Hate these fuckers because they're causing all this. Get the uh, the poisoning and the blood of Americans. Get rid of the vermin. Um, stop the insanity of, of the people having stolen the election from me. I am your leader. I deserve to be your leader. What the hell is going on? Keep the queers away. Keep the immigrants away. Keep everybody out of here. This is Fortress America. We are under assault. But we've got to drill and drill and drill. We we we've got to um we got to shove women back into some space where they don't have control over their own bodies. We've got to do all this. And people listen to Trump and they're, they're giving concrete lies that they can wrap their little minds around. Whereas Biden gives us concepts. We've got to preserve democracy. Well, what does that mean? Preserve democracy. Mr. President, what the hell do you want me to do? Um, letting voters know about what the orange bastard is saying, that he represents an absolute threat to democracy. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy. 
24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.